Hello friends, my name is Wendy Ness, and this is the start of a week reading vlog. We just finished doing the live show slash keynote that was basically the announcements for what's happening with BookNet Fest online, a little bit of an introduction. We also recorded a podcast episode today, which uh, if you go and listen to that live show, we explain that we're taking some of the panels that would have been live panels at this year's event and we're converting them into podcast episodes. So you guys can get a taste of what would have happened at BookNet Fest this year. And there's a ton of other content involved so you can check that out. I spent Saturday clearing off all of the books that were on my shelves and not only that but like clearing out the storage closet, the guest room closet in there and throwing a bunch of stuff out. I also cleaned in my room pretty deeply and threw a bunch of stuff out so I was just like on a roll of doing that and then I took down all of the books. I've recorded most of my tour slash unhaul and all of that unedited footage is waiting to be edited and then I also have like podcast episodes to edit for book Netfest. so like my to-do list is very very long right now and then I was just like oh wow this is more productive than you have been in a long time. You are tired. Also like everything is super messy. I have books piled all over the dining room table inside of my room and then today I realized that my kitchen sink was leaking and the entire like storage cabinet space underneath was full of water so I had to empty that out and clean it out but everything that is under there they're now on like the countertops so I have like just stuff everywhere countertops dining room table all over my room piles and piles and piles and um, no energy to do anything about that at this current moment I mean I cleaned all of that out I did my live show in a podcast like I'm tired so naturally I just started to start a reading vlog. <laughs> Hopefully somewhere in this reading vlog that I'm starting right now is some reading but also putting these books back on my shelves in the way that I want them and showing you guys around this new space a little bit. I'm still missing some furniture for the office but most of the things are here. As for what I'm going to be reading, I don't know. I mean I do know one thing. I spent this weekend while I was cleaning rereading the first five books in the Kate Daniel series. Uh, so now this is the third time that I've gone through them and I feel like maybe <laughs> I say this every time, maybe I will continue reading in the series and actually finish the next five books and like finish off the whole thing. But that's one thing that I'm going to try and especially listen to. I'm almost done with one to watch. I have I think like 200 pages left in that and a bunch of other things that I'm like either interested in or right in the middle of. So plenty of things to choose from. This is my room right now and those are the piles of books. It's chill. It's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. Good morning. I don't have a reading update and I did my makeup in this color again because I do what I want. I woke up this morning just thinking I have so much to do today. It's the first time in a while that I've felt this like overwhelm of how much I want and need to get done because you know we've been inside doing nothing for so long or a lot of us have. It's one of those things that it just gets in my head and in my brain and it, it doesn't let me really process how much I need to get done and how much I am accomplishing. Like I can't measure either of those things because my brain is just like you have so much to do, you have so much to do, you have so much to do. So even as I'm getting things done it doesn't even feel as satisfying because my brain's like don't forget you have so much to do. So that's where I've been all morning. I am in my office and I got Got up to do a little bit of a lunch break so I figured that I would show you guys what's in here so far. So this is what's going on right now in my office. This like console table is going to be where I put all of my TBR books and like random bits and bobbles and things. Right now it has just like my file folder as you can see. I'm going to be changing those curtains and that curtain rod just to kind of better match the decor that's going to be in here but that's the console table. As you can see I was working at my desk this morning so it's a little bit messy. I've got my personal laptop and my work laptop both on there and as you can see the matching bookshelves. Oh yeah like surprise I said I was gonna buy two and I bought three. <laughs> This area over here, like in front of the desk, right now I'm just charging batteries, but it's gonna have a sleeper sofa there. And then I'm gonna hang up some artwork over there. And then there's my printer right now on the floor, but I bought like a little 
um, organizer sort of thing, like filing cabinet, like a lateral one. So my printer will go on top and that will be extra storage and then a plant and there's gonna be a mirror on that side. That lamp that broke, the, the glass part of it broke. I don't know what I'm gonna do about that right now. Either, I don't know, something, lamp, I don't know. So yeah, it's coming together. It still looks a little empty, so all you see is like brass in your face because all the furniture is matchy-matchy. But this sofa that I'm buying is a jade green, I believe. So it's gonna bring in a pop of color. And then once all the books are in there, it will lessen the harshness of all the matchy-matchy furniture, I believe. So I'm liking the way that it's looking so far. And yeah, all I gotta do is finish doing my unhauls so that I can start figuring out how I'm going to organize everything on these shelves. You know, basically nothing. I was just scared half to death by a knock on the door, but it's a package from Penguin Random House. So, and it is... Sanctuary by Paola Mendoza and Abby Schur. So I remember they reached out to me to know if I was interested in reading this. They were especially looking for Latinx re readers and reviewers and I had not seen the cover like prior to saying yes I would be interested in it but this is freaking beautiful. This is about a near future America where everybody's required to be implanted with a chip that basically has their whole identity and so the main character and her family are trying to go meet their aunt in California which is a sanctuary basically for people who would be considered illegal in this near future and so it is the story of that journey. Her and her little brother end up having to go on this journey alone. This is going to be the first book on my TBR console.
it because I haven't been reading. Like I did start reading the House Salts book for this month and I was really proud of myself because I started early, but we actually have to push back the live show from this upcoming Saturday to the next one because Sam has to work. So we're pushing it back and I mean, I could just keep reading it <laughs> and be like on time, but you know, I don't know. I've been like not reading. I've been so tired after work and the only really like productive thing that I am feeling right now is Snark Squad. So I've been watching TV for Snark Squad and writing recaps and stuff and then I just go to bed early and the last two nights in bed I've been listening to Pride and Prejudice. So that's where I am. I have been trying to freaking figure out these shelves and I have so much footage of me like putting stuff on, taking stuff off, putting stuff on, taking stuff off. Um, but this morning I walked in here and I kind of like of all the options that I had done I felt like one stood out to me so just now at lunch I rearranged everything a little bit more I'll show you guys better than that but um so the first two top two shelves are done I think I'm okay with how they are I'm very torn right now between like making things as visually appealing as possible but maintaining like some semblance of organization so it's a lot of like little decisions that I have to make as I'm putting things on and then as soon as it's on I'm like oh I don't like that and I start rearranging and it makes everything worse because I keep like stashing piles of books places like oh I'll just put this here for now and then I think I'm done with something and then I discover two more books that should have been on that shelf that I put somewhere else for whatever reason and so you know this is um, it will be fine after I'm done I was gonna say this is supposed to be fun but is it I don't know so I'm gonna keep doing this for a little while until lunch is over and then I'm going back to work and then we'll see if I feel like reading tonight so I finally just moved all of the books that were left in piles outside. Most of them, I have like a few scattered, but they're all in here now. So I'll show you what I have going on. These are all of the TBR books that I have right now, including those. And so all of this is supposed to go on there. <laughs> It feels like a lot to me right now, but maybe it's just because in pile it's in piles. I mean, yeah, so we'll see how much of that or how I can arrange it. And then here's what I have so far up on the shelves. I'm feeling good about this arrangement so far. I'll talk to you guys more about it once I'm sure that's what's gonna happen, but I still have all of those books and those over there. And then these on my desk that need to go on the shelf. So that's kind of what I'm figuring out now. I started doing the rainbow thing with my tallest books. I'm kind of out of breath from running around and picking up all the books and bringing them in here, but that's what I have going. So up at the top, I've got my classics, basically, collections and things of that nature. I decided to try my drop caps with the, like, facing backwards, which I know some people really hate when books are on the shelves facing backwards. Maybe it will start to bother me, but right now I think it looks really cool, so I'm going to keep it. And then over here, I have more classics collections. Down here, I start my series. There are series, like I said, that I only have a single one and they're down at the bottom. But if I have something that's like actually together, I've grouped them up. So Game of Thrones, Fairyland, here is His Dark Materials, and this is the Neapolitan novels. Then in the middle, you can see more series. We've got Chaos Walking, we've got The Witcher, we've got Daughter of Smork and Bone, we've got The Underland Chronicles, House Moving Castle, and then Narnia. 
And then we come over here and we've got His Dark Materials again. And we've got the Lunar Chronicles. And we've got a Kata Witch and a Kata Warrior. And then some more series over there. Then down here, I just picked out all of my black and white books and I did black on one side, white on the other side. And I just did it from height order down. I tried to make it look as pleasing as possible, but there's really no rhyme or reason to this shelf except for black and white. Then down here, I've got more hardbacks and I'm doing them in height order and then sort of in color order. So it's kind of going from rainbow color and then it starts over because these are shorter books so that's kind of the most important thing to me is that they're all together by height and then the end over here is just a bunch of like books that don't really fit anywhere else because they're weird shaped so I just put it as an end cap here I have got same sort of deal these are just kind of like two random books I don't know what I'm gonna do with them yet but this the rest of this is um, manga and graphic novels. These are my mass market paperbacks that I put facing outwards to kind of just, I hate mass market paperbacks and I hate the way that they look on my shelf. So I just put them facing out to sort of differentiate from my graphic novels and manga. And then over here is paperbacks. Again, by height and sort of by color where I could, but mostly by height. And then down at the end, even more things that don't fit anywhere because they're so weirdly shaped. So there's my desk in front of the shelves. Let's kind of see it from this angle. You know, I'm really kind of bad at this, but I'm doing my best to not shake. Daylight's almost gone, but I put everything at least on here. I'm not really happy with the way that this looks. To be honest, it, it, it mm, I don't like it at all. It just is like a lot. It feels kind of messy. But the way that I organized it for now is these are books that I have started and have not finished. So I'm some portion of the way into them. And then these are books that I want to get to sooner rather than later. And then these are like second tier things that I would like to read. I was trying to do like second and third tier, but I have too many books and I just needed to kind of cram them all in there. I'm sure there's a better way to organize this that looks more appealing, but I don't know. I just needed to get them out of my way. And then these are all series books that I have in series that I need to eventually finish. And then at the end, it's comic books and manga. I'm really tired. <laughs> it's not even that late. I'm going to eat something and probably, I mean, I always say like, go to bed and read. And then I end up like not going to bed and reading. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to not do things <laughs> for a little bit. But yeah, I'm like, freaking almost done. I'm so excited. My couch, which is going over here, gets here at the end of next week. And I do have like the little thing that's going to go there. That's like a file organizer. Um, but I have to build it and put it in place behind me over there. You can, are, those are all unhauled books. And, um, this is coming together. I'm really excited that I don't have piles of books everywhere anymore. Okay, I actually did one more thing and I thought it was going to be like immediately better when I thought of it. Like I was like, oh, duh, that's the thing to do. But I did it and it's fine. Like it's not, <laughs> it's fine. I'm like with my shelves right now, like I really like the way that they came out, but it's also still like growing on me and I'm getting used to it because I had the other shelves for so long. So maybe this will grow on me too but i don't know this tbr shelf is going to be the bane of my existence but basically what i did is turn them all backwards so the pages are out and obviously you can still see which books they are like on the sides and on the top and you know they're my books so i know more or less what they all are i just thought it would maybe look less busy this way i don't know Good morning. Yesterday I finished assembling this little thing behind me here, which is where I'm going to keep my printer. I'm going to put a plant next to it and probably a mirror on that wall. And then there's some extra space for like storage of things, mainly for like office supplies. And like my yearbooks are on there, my coloring books and things that aren't necessarily like bookshelf stuff, but that still need a place to live. I kind of want to get crafty with it and add some gold in like the back of the open two cubbies, but we'll see how that goes. 
clothes. As I was assembling that yesterday after work, I finished listening to book five of the Kate Daniels series, which of course now I'm gonna forget and all of them are magic something, so. And then I started book six, which I've never actually read, so I'm making progress and it's going very quickly as Kate Daniels always does, so I will actually have <laughs> progressed in my trying to read the series, which is wonderful. And then this morning I spent some quality time in bed after I woke up. It was great and I finished reading One to Watch. Every time I picked this up, I flew right through it. It was super entertaining and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was such a fun and funny read. I can't necessarily speak to the representation and how everybody will feel about the fat rep in there. I enjoyed reading about her personal journey, the characters though. She obviously had like a positive relationship with her body, but there were still things that she needed to like sort of unpack and reframe specifically as it pertained to like finding somebody who would like look past her body and then she had to realize that what she was looking for is not somebody who to look past it because it was part of her so I really enjoyed the main character B and I enjoyed how it ended and I really really loved like the snippets in between so she goes on a reality tv and so there are snippets of like people posting in forums the podcast episodes were particularly funny to me because they had these like ads as well all of it was just really entertaining and I think that the author really understands what makes like a reality TV dating show tick and why people get invested in the characters and sort of like the fakeness of reality TV but at the same time like the real hope that somebody could indeed fall in love against all odds so she she treated that very well like I said, overall, really pleasant experience. I'm between four and five stars. I have to let it settle a little bit longer, um, but that was a good one. And so I'm going to keep listening to book six in the Kate Daniel series. And then I just came here to my TBR section and I picked up this lock-in by John Scalzi. One, because it's really compact and I'm about to head out so I can just stuff this in my purse. And two, because after I read um, in the first in the In Death series and then started Kate Daniels, I'm kind of like in the mood for sci-fi fantasy and from what I understand this is also like a mystery element with somebody who's like an investigator at the lead of it so this is like right in sort of where I am reading wise right now and it's off my TBR section look at me go mm -mm. so this book is getting put on my red shelf and I have just the spot for it wonderful Good morning. I feel like I stare all of these updates in the morning and I say good morning, but I am working. It is 11 and I haven't done like coffee and breakfast yet. So I'm about to go get that started, but I also wanted to update you guys on a couple of things. I've decided that I'm probably not going to do an August wrap up for the books that I read in August. It's like four books and then five of the Kate Daniels books, which I don't really want to talk about Kate Daniels again until I finish off that series, which I'm still reading book six. So I'm just going to bring those four books over into whatever I read in September and then do like a big wrap up at the end of September. That's kind of my thinking. I also, you know, to add to my gigantic physical TBR, the advanced listener copies from Libro FM this month were fantastic. The options were, and I'm just so excited about a few of these. And I kind of want to, you know, this is how I end up in the middle of like a million books because I'm in the middle of a million books and I'm like, ooh, but look at these shiny new ones that I could be listening to. So let me tell you what I got. I'm really excited. I got Transcendent Kingdom by Yajasi. And you're like, Mari, haven't you not read the other one? And you're right, I haven't read Homegoing. I haven't read it yet. It, but I, now I have the new one. Uh, when No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole, which I'm very excited about. Alyssa Cole writing a thriller. Like, that sounds amazing. And then I have Shit Actually by Lindy West, which I showed you guys during my haul that I own both of her other collections of essays, and I really enjoyed them. I enjoy her humor and just her take on all things like pop culture and media specifically, so I'm really excited about this one. And To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paulini. So those are the four advanced listener copies that I got this month. And again, that's from Libro FM, which I'm part of this program. It's just like receiving ARCs. Anytime I mention them, I always mention how great their service is, especially if you're trying to support independent bookshops. And also, I just really enjoy their interface and their app. Their app is really cute, and I enjoy their player a lot more than Audible's, to be honest. And I love that when I speed up my audiobook, which I always do, it calculates for me how much actual time I have left 
left in the audiobook. The other little thing that I wanted to tell you is that I get my couch today. My art is already here. My couch gets here today. My new curtain rod gets here today so I can hang my curtains. I'm really excited. I already love it and I just know that those like finishing details are going to be great and it's made working here and working from home feel so much better already. It feels so much more spacious and my desk is so much more conducive to like actually working and it feels like an office not having the bed in here helps a lot so overall great idea <laughs> <laughs> patting myself on the back <laughs> for having the idea that everybody else in, is stuck in isolation had to spruce up their spaces. couch which I think the last thing that I showed you was me assembling this couch. I'm going to show you around a little bit in here in a bit but I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a reading update because I completely forgot even though I had it on my radar it just like slipped on by again that tomorrow is the household's live show for August so I have to read the book. I have 11 hours left in the audiobook. I started it last week and it was like on the ball and then I just was like oh I have a whole week and then now it's tomorrow. So I have to read that between today and 4 30 tomorrow when we go live. Uh, yeah and then also I started another book so I'm usually in the middle of like a lot of books but it, it's really bad right now and I think it's just because I'm in a funky reading mood. It's just been a lot recently so my reading has taken a bit of a back burner and also all the reading that I am doing is apparently just starting books. So I started Shit Actually by Lindy West. It's narrated by Lindy West. I have loved her two other books, her two other collections of essays. And this one, I, I didn't even know honestly that it was coming out. I just saw it as I mentioned on the Libro FM ALC program. So I was like, yeah, I want to try that. I love Lindy West. But I didn't know anything about it and it is very different from her other um, collections because this one is basically just criticizing movies and criticizing but it's just very like snark squad-esque very like television without pity like recappy and in that way like infusing the criticism with like jokes about the actual content so obviously it's something that I love <laughs> and I'm just enjoying the crap out of listening to this like laughing out loud loving this format of like recapping but also criticism and doing it with humor it is it is a great like pandemic isolation if you're feeling down kind of read and I'm about 48% of the way through which I got through last night just in one sitting so I think the rest of this is going to read pretty quickly like this is what I want to be reading <laughs> I'm going to do my homework. It's not a not that I'm not enjoying Set Fire to the Gods, but you know me and deadlines, how I roll. So yes, those are the two books that I'm going to give priority and hopefully actually finish. And then I have all of the other things that I'm in the middle of. So let's show you around this office as it is now. It's not like super clean and put together because I'm actually like working in here right now. I just took a little break. So I'll show you what I got. So I assembled my little sleeper couch. This is all one. It looks like cushions, but it's 
it's actually like it's not lifting as you see it's all like one piece all put together because this opens up like i can push it back and it will open up into like a, a guest bed like a sleeper bed so um unfortunately after i put it all together i saw that it's got a rip here and it's right on the seam so i feel like it could be like stitched together pretty easily, but I'm not like a really, like I, I called at first and I was like, listen, there's a rip and you know, I d it's fine, it's on the seam. And they were like, oh, we're sorry about that. We'll give you a discount on the couch, which was great. And I was gonna keep it, I assembled it. I loved it, so I was just gonna keep it that way. But I don't know, I just feel like it's gonna keep unraveling. And every time I sit down on it, it just kind of like opens back up again. So to get it fixed, I couldn't do it myself. Like maybe I know somebody who could, but Anyway, it would be like more money to fix it and I already paid money for this couch. So as much as I wanted to be like chill about it, I called back and I was like, listen, I, I actually paid for this like brand new. So I'm really sorry. That's literally how I was on the phone. Like, I'm really sorry. And they were like, don't worry. They're sending me a new a replacement part. This is the replace. They have to replace all this entire part. The only thing that is like not that middle part are the arms and the legs, like that's what I put together. So I'm getting the entire middle part of the couch again. Somebody's gonna take it off my hands and I feel like they could like put the effort in to make it a viable couch and they got it for free. So anyways, that's the couch. I uh, put some artwork up above there, which I wasn't sure about. Like, I love the artwork itself. I wasn't sure about the colors in here. Like, maybe I wanted something deeper, more jewel toned, but the colors are growing on me and I love the art anyway, so that's that. I still haven't ordered the replacement glass <laughs> shade for that, but I will. There's my TBR cart, still facing backwards. I think it's growing on me. Then we've got this section over here, which I am going to do the crafty gold paint on here, but I also have this mirror that I need to hang up on that wall. It's just kind of hanging out right there for the time being, because I don't have a drill. So my brother-in-law has to come with his drill so we can hang that up. And this is um, one plant and two plants that I bought. They're fake plants. <laughs> and I know some people have like really strong feelings about fake plants, but your girl hates bugs. At, like they legitimately bugs ruin my life. I don't want any bugs in my apartment. I own a few plants and like at the beginning of quarantine, I was like, maybe I'll be a plant person. And then I was like, actually no, because not only do I hate bugs and they ruin my life, but then I'm like really paranoid about having plants because of the possible, and I'm like, is, is that a bug that I see? So all of those real plants are out on my balcony right now, but I wanted some like green in the space, like plant green to go with like the pink and green I have going on. So, I mean, it looks great. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're anti-fake plant, but um, I love it. But that's, that's everything now. Everything is in here. Just hanging the mirror, painting this like printer thing, getting that replacement part and then i'm done today is labor day and i have the day off i did finish reading two things this weekend one was set fire to the gods by kristen simmons and sarah rash and that was our house salts book club pick so i read it pretty much all on saturday because you know that's how i do with deadlines um but i got it done in time and we had a great conversation about it which is already live our house salts pick for September is Son of a Trickster. So I'll leave that information. I can't remember the author off the top of my head, but I'll leave the information in the description below. Um, so that one's all done. And then I was listening to an audiobook, Shit Actually by Lindy West. It's just kind of her funny critical take on some of her like favorite movies of yesteryear. So she talks about like Jurassic Park and Twilight and the Harry Potter movie and like different things that are like super popular. Her humor hits with me like 90% of the time and the 10% of the time that I'm just like that wasn't funny it's usually some sort of like potty humor which is not a thing that I enjoy and so like I said there were 
for the most part, I was just cracking up and loving it. There were a few times I was like, oh, okay, a little far, but in general, just right up my alley for the sort of like critical and snarky media criticism that I enjoy. I just loved it so much. And in a way too, that I was like, oh, I could write things like this. Like, I know I do Snark Squad, but there's always that like, I don't know, that I the things that we would love to do. So, you know, for me, it's like video essays on this channel or something that I always am like, I could do that. And then, but also like on Snark Squad, like shorter form, just like single post, like things like these chapters where in, in this book, where it's just like a one shot takedown of, of something. So I don't know. I really, I really enjoyed it. It left me feeling inspired in certain ways. It was also written in April of this year, parts of it, or, you know, rewritten. And so a lot of it was timely and she was referencing like the pandemic and shutdown and everything that's happening right now and making ties to media in such funny, clever ways. So that was definitely like a four and a half out of five star read for me. Set Fire to the God was like three out of five stars for me. And I also started last night. So I basically have been spending this entire log starting things <laughs> and so that's kind of what happens to me when I am in like whirlwind and like busy mode is that I start things but they don't really hook me and then I just keep moving around and yeah whirlwinding is the best way to describe it and then what happens is that I get into this like mental block place so I keep thinking about the things that I've already started that I need to get back to and that like I need to get back to it starts creating a sense of obligation which becomes like a mental block for me so I keep thinking about all of the books on my TBR like the physical ones all of the books that I've started and that haven't finished all of the arcs that I have all of the net galley things and so all of this like I have to I have to I have to it stop it makes me want to not want to read so I just like clean slated it not saying that I won't ever get back to these books that I started but I was just like buddy don't worry about anything that you've started what do you want to read right now and I picked up a nonfiction book I had to I had to get up and go get it because I I actually forgot the name, but it's Wandering in Strange Lands by Morgan Jerkins. So in this, she talks a lot about the Great Migration and just about like the identity and culture and origins of African Americans in the United States. And she does so by kind of tracing her own family line. Like she knows her parents are both from the South, but they met in New Jersey. So kind of tracing it back to where they were. So one of them she can trace back to the Gullah Geechee people, which was really fascinating. And then another the one she finds out is from like the Louisiana area and is Creole. So just watching her make her way around that, it really is unpacking a lot of things for me about like what I understand as kind of black culture and black identity. And she talks specifically about like Creole people and how they're mixed people and the sort of things that that brings up in black culture and black communities, but also how the way that they're viewed from the outside. I've been doing like a lot of identity work just because I'm Dominican. My parents are Dominican. They're both Dominican. We can trace our family back not that far back because of what it means to be Dominican. It is such a mashup of the indigenous people, the Taino, but also like the Spanish, which I can trace some of my family to Spain, but also African slaves. Like Dominican identity is very much a melting of those three things. And then you take that and you put it into a place like the United States where race is so politicized, like it's a construct. And the definition of these races just across the, the history of the United States is so fraught. So I am by racial. I am black. I am also Hispanic. I am Latina. There's all of these different elements and pieces of my identity. And so hearing her kind of work through this for herself, especially since part of her family is Creole, has been like really interesting and eye opening. And there's so many things that she's discovering about like black culture and like sort of the the traditions and things that she has always just grown up with. Like that's the way that we do it, that just hit so close to home in a way that I'm like, it, I don't know, my, it's just so interesting to me, especially considering that my family, my parents are immigrants, but these are things that are in Black culture because it's things that are from various places in Africa. So those same pieces of culture are things that I can see passed down through my own family. And it just confirms for me so much of like the work that I've been trying to do, not only for myself, but in educating my family and like, this is part of who we are. And not only because of like the boxes that it takes for 
the U.S. government or the color of our skin or whatnot, but because of like the things in our culture, in our habits, in our beliefs that just like derive directly from there. I prefer my nonfiction with a narrative bent. I like things that feel more like a story than just like sort of a lot of information. And she does kind of bring us through a story of like how she did her research, but it is a lot of information and it's a little more like, I don't know, not chatty to like disparage the, the quality of the information that she's giving us, but it's very much like I learned this, I learned this. So in that essence, it's like not my favorite sort of nonfiction, but it is obviously making me think, making me process. It's presented very clearly and very well. That's probably the entire <laughs> review of this book, even though I'm not done yet. I have just a couple of chapters left and so I think I'm going to end up giving this like four or four and a half out of five stars, but I'll let you know after I'm done with those few chapters. I look really, really tired and I've got these bags under my eyes. Uh, yes, that's, that is how I feel. Even though I had a day off yesterday, it was excellent, and I got some Starbucks, and I went to my family's house, and we took a little swim in the pool, so it was all good. It was a very restful day. I think because I rested so much yesterday, I had a hard time going back to sleep because I wasn't tired, and then this morning when I actually had to be up and working, I was tired. I did read yesterday. I started Lock In by John Scalzi, and I made it 10 pages before the writing style started to get to me. So he's one of those writers that says, said, after each piece of dialogue. So it's like, she said, he said, they said, but said, 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 said. And I, I couldn't take it. Like it was really getting under my skin. So I've put it back on my TBR section for now. Like, I don't know if this is goodbye forever, but I'm feeling better about just letting it go because I couldn't, I couldn't even get into like the first 10 pages because it was so repetitive and I don't know so I'm, I'm it's over there in the timeout corner I'm thinking about it and then finally I went to Glory and Death which is the second in death book by J.D. Robb Nora Roberts and I started I read the first one a few weeks ago and I enjoyed it it's super dated it's super dated and the beginning of the relationship is icky in a lot of ways like I don't dislike the characters together or separately but there were a few things that were like dubious consent and just he's he's trying to force her almost into situations and you understand why because she's very reluctant because of past trauma to be in a relationship but that doesn't really excuse the way that he treats her at points and it wasn't fun to read about for me. So overall it's like a three star read but I knew that the pieces were there to like it's a 51 book series I think at this point so it's been going on for a long time and I'm just like really curious am I gonna read 51 books? Probably not. I mean I'm, I'm still in book six of Kate Daniels like struggle busting my way through um, but I read book two. It was better in those areas where I was like this is kind of gross so the relationship was much more palatable, consensual, like all of that was great. But there were still portions of the first book that showed up here, like Rourke is a suspect again. And like, not really, she knows in her heart that he's not, but he keeps showing up in the investigation. So it's like, we did this already. And I know it's gonna be 51 books, so maybe I'm gonna be like, like that a lot, but just so close together, I was like, mm, are we, are we doing this? And the answer was like, not quite, but still enough that it was noticeable. And also this was another crime where it was like violence against women was like the primary motivating thing. So I don't know if this, is this also a thing? Like a defining feature of this entire series is just like these two people always solve crimes against women, like violent crimes against women. I didn't know that signing up. So seeing it again here, I was like, is this a thing? So yeah. I still enjoyed it. This one's better than the last one. So this one's probably like a 3.5 stars. And I am going to read the next one probably pretty soon here. So like I'm enjoying it. I'm getting into it. But these beginning pieces are rough. And you can tell dated. But I'm excited to see where it will go. That's it. I don't even know how much reading I did during the, this whole vlog. Honestly, it's like a whirlwind. Um, but we did it. We fixed this area. We got our books back. And the next thing you'll see from me, like not like next, but in this project, is that I'm going to go back and tell you about some books that I have saved or decided to get rid of based on your recommendations. So stick around for those as well. Thank you for sticking around 
for all of these. Can't wait to talk to you guys about all of this down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon.